Oh my goodness, guys, the level of corruption that we're witnessing from our government concerning this lawsuit commission by our agency uh, settlement. This is, this is, this is insane. Like, are, are, is this the world we're living in where this level of corruption, this loud, this publicly uh, exist. I want to dive into two situations for you. I'm going to cover these really quickly. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I want to move right on to some real value. I want to talk about the dates that the new rules are going to come into effect. And honestly, what are the new rules going to be? <laughs> we don't even really know. I think people are still, different MLSs are still arguing about this and what they're going to do. Um, but this, are, these, this is something that's going to be forced on us very soon. And at the end of this video, I want to share with you an incredible conversation I had on Instagram Live with Jared James about all of this. You're going to find a lot of value there. So I wanted to put that at the end of this video to give you the most value possible. I'm going to cover these stories as quickly as possible so we can get to that value. And But first, I'm going to take a sip of Fresca because every time I take a sip of this Fresca, I get a new listing. Mm. And speaking of drinking Fresca and getting new listings and making calls, next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to be right here live on YouTube, and I'm bringing the cold call sessions back, baby. I'm going to be calling expireds, prospecting for you live, so you can watch me in action. Watch me call live prospects, set listing appointments, do deals, begin relationships, uh, with clients. Uh, and listen, show up, uh, turn it on, uh, watch it in the background while you're making your calls. Show up and make calls with me. This is something I used to do all the time. If you're a new subscriber, you can go back. Uh, there's dozens and dozens of, of live call sessions on my channel. You can go back and watch, but I'm going to bring this back. If it goes good, maybe I'll start doing it every week again. You know, you never know. So let's, let's dive into this. I want to share these two situations with you. Uh, just so you're clear on the level of corruption and you can form your own opinion about it. Uh, I also want to talk about the dates that these new rules for us as agents are going to come into effect. And then I'll share that video um, for Mr. Jared James. So recently, the DOJ response to the NAR petition hearing is not warranted. Now, what are they talking about? OK, so on June 17th, the Department of Justice responded to a petition filed by the National Association of Realtors. NARS petition requested a rehearing of the court's decision to allow the DOJ to reopen its investigation. Now, this investigation they, that they're, the DOJ is trying to reopen is, a, is an investigation from 2020 that they reached a settlement on. OK, they reached a settlement on and now the DOJ wants to reopen and they've been trying to reopen it ever since the new um, Biden administration came in. Um, but the DOJ stated that a hearing is not warranted. So what happened was is that the, the, the DOJ has been trying to reopen the investigation. There was a two to one judge a vote reopening it okay, earlier this year. And NAR wanted to appeal that. OK, well, well, when they go to appeal it, you know, the DOJ is basically the plaintiffs, let's just say. But they're also the head of the court. <laughs> and so the DOJ rules on if the appeal is, is warranted and uh, against their own self. Okay. <laughs> this is where the corruption is right here is that the DOJ basically said, no, we're not going to let your appeal go through against us. <laughs> right? I mean, okay. What? Okay. What about due process and stuff? Okay. Um, in May, NAR filed a petition to rehear uh, for the rehearing of the court's decision that allows the DOJ to reopen its investigation against the organization. On June 17th, they were, uh, the DOJ responded, stating the rehearing is not warranted. In the filing, the DOJ argues that the three-judge uh, panel's fact-bound decision is correct and does not conflict with any decision of the Supreme Court or any courts of appeals. Okay, so back in um, November 2020, the DOJ sent a three-sentence letter to NAR agreeing to close its investigation into the group. Okay. And, and, and so earlier that year, they, they opened up an antitrust division, agreed to a settlement. They agreed to a settlement after investigating NAR's listing and agent compensation policies. The settlement was conditioned upon NAR boosting transparency about broker commissions, okay, and required them to stop misrepresenting buyer agent services as free. 
So that's basically what this was, is that the um, the DOJ wanted to investigate antitrust and uh, they, they ended up agreeing on a, a settlement where NAR said, we'll boost transparency and we'll quit misrepresenting buyer agency uh, as free. And then as the Biden administration came in, I don't know if politics has anything to do with this. I'm not saying it does. I'm not saying it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But when the Biden administration came in, um, they worked towards, the DOJ worked towards reopening this case. And this is kind of where we are. So in the wake of the Sitzer Burnett trial, the Nacella case, and all the different cases and copycat litigations and everything, you know, the DOJ, you know, moves to reopen their investigation while they're also um, like meddling with the settlements of the Nacella case uh, and the Sitzer Burnett. I mean, they're, they're, they're in there, right? So let's move on to the second, the second situation here. Okay, which is exactly what I'm talking about. DOJ has stepped in on this settlement agreement, right, for the Sitzer Burnett trial and the uh, the Nacellet case. Listen to this. As part of its March settlement agreement, Sitzer Burnett case, NAR agreed to amend its compensation regulations, including prohibiting offers of broker compensation on, or commission in the MLS. Okay, which, which is which is insane because if they, here's the thing, if you know, back a year ago or, or more than that, whenever it was where, where the National Association of Realtors came out and said, OK, we're going to reduce it from one dollar. Right. You have to put at least one dollar as a broker, as a buyer broker commission. We're going to reduce that from one dollar to zero dollars. And that literally gives all sellers a choice now, a choice they can offer if they want to. Right. It used to be mandatory that if, if a seller did not offer any buyer agent commission, they could not put their property on MLS. OK, so when, when they reduce it to zero, they're basically giving the sellers a choice. Hey, you you can offer a buyer agent commission if you want to, but you don't have to. You can put zero in that field. See, that that would have that would have been they should have stopped right there. Right. That would have been perfect. OK, give the sellers the choice to do it if they want to. But now now they're taking it way too far. They want to remove it completely. And you can't even talk about commission on MLS. Now you're taking away their freedom of speech, which is what the lawyers of the MLS pen uh, says here. So the broker compensation can still be negotiated and discussed. OK, so they're like, oh, you can still talk about it. OK, you can still talk about it. It can still be there, but you can't. But it can't be done through MLS. Why not? What 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 is the MLS? What what does it matter if you're saying we can talk about it? If you're saying we can discuss it, then why are what's what does it matter if it's if if we do it through MLS or not? It also requires MLS participants working with buyers to enter into written agreements with those buyers. Okay. Um. So they gave the plaintiffs uh for the for uh an MLS and the no sell it case time to respond. Right. And then the, the MLS pen filed its response. It says the DOJ's position not only goes far, far beyond uh, what antitrust law requires, it also creates an antitrust problem for the MLS pen where none existed. So so this is really cool because the MLS pen, um, they're pushing back on DOJ. They're pushing back on not allowing uh, them to 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 have the buyer agency agreement in MLS. Okay, MLS pen uh, cannot enter into uh, an agreement to ban the publication of free market compensation offers without offending the very antitrust principles DOJ claims to be protecting. Okay, MLS pen, you tell them, you tell them. Um, to impose such a ban through a federal injunction would also suppress speech that is protected under the First Amendment. Okay. DOJ never denies um, that sellers have the right to compensate buyer brokers and only advocates arbitrary restraints on the communication of compensation of offers. And they are absolutely correct. They're basically saying, oh, yeah, you can offer a buyer to commission. You just can't talk about it. You know, you can't put it on MLS. Why not? What I mean, if you're going to offer it, why can't you let people know that you're offering? This is this is going to suppress um, transparency around is a seller offering buyers and commission or not? Because they could be, 
right? DOJ isn't saying that you can't, which would be crazy if they go that far and say, oh, you just can't. I mean, is that is that where they're going? Like, what's what's the bigger um, agenda here? Okay, they're reopening the case from 2020 that they agreed to. Um, here, they're they're interjecting and saying that you know this settlement, uh, you can't offer biology commission. Uh, what? what 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 is behind this? There's got to be something bigger going on here. Okay. MLS Penn also contends the DOJ provides no authority over the matter and ignores federal cases and state statutes that approved the practices here in the Bay State. DOJ provides no authorities establishing such a prohibition uh, is required as a, ma a matter of antitrust law, and DOJ ignores. Uh, it, many authorities from federal cases to state uh, statutes have proven the very practice it now seeks to prohibit through a settlement of civil litigation. Notably, the Massachusetts Supreme uh, Judicial Court has recognized buyer broker commissions for over 100 years. You can see this case right here. Not only are these practices approved, they are widely recognized as beneficial to consumers, particularly first time home buyers and others at risk of exclusion from the housing market. It is little wonder that DOJ's position has been met with swift criticism by experts who say that it is the worst possible outcome for millions of home buyers. And so when you think about this, the, the, the situations, it's just mind blowing when you really sit down and think about it. And you, you hear these other MLSs and you hear agents, they're saying, well, we're going to we're going to start we're going to start advertising commissions as seller uh, concessions. All right, we're gonna we're gonna market as seller concessions, and so what, what, what concessions is now gonna be the code word for commissions. And the DOJ, you know, I've already got downwind, and I'll, I, I don't know where I read it, I don't know where I heard it, but I've already gotten downwind that the DOJ is not gonna stand for that. If we're gonna be using code words, they're gonna come in or they're gonna you know take care of that too. It's like, well, where is this gonna like? You're literally. You're literally taking away people's freedom of speech and the freedom to do exactly whatever it is they want to do when it comes to advertising their homes. Um, like I said, bringing it from the $1 down to zero, giving sellers the choice to do it if they want to or not do it, mm -hmm. I think was exactly, exactly, exactly all that needed to happen here. The DOJ and everybody else should have been happy with that right there but no they want to take it so far they want to take it so far and open up and open up this can of worms and that's exactly what they're doing they're opening up a can of worms that they have no idea what's going to happen what the consequences are uh, and, and how messy it's actually going to get and so my question is why are they doing this now when is all this going to come to effect with all these rules and everything so earlier this week, the National Association of Realtors reminded the MLSs and brokerages of the June 18th deadline to opt into the NAR settlement. So if you were doing uh, more than two billion dollars as a brokerage, um, you know, and an MLS uh, in 2022, okay, that that you need to resolve that that case uh, that claims brought on behalf of home sellers related to brokers by June 18th. Okay, it didn't cover brokerages that were doing more than two billion. So you had till um, you know a couple of days ago at midnight to opt into that. And I know there's some um, companies that didn't opt into it, right? And so when the when the um, when everybody opted in the other day, whoever's in the settlement, et cetera, basically, uh, and I read this somewhere that that NAR has till uh, August 17th. Okay, August 17th, they're saying it right here, following his uh, opt-in day's deadline, NAR's mandatory MLS policy changes implemented in uh, the settlement practice uh, changes will take effect on August 17th. So I've heard from certain MLSs that they're starting the changes uh, sooner. Yeah, I don't know how that works. Uh, how do they already know exactly what the rules are? Um, and, but I read somewhere that NAR had till August 17th to say what the rules are, and the brokerages and MLSs have till September uh, 18th to start um, following these rules. Okay. So, my advice is to go to your broker, to go to your MLS, to ask them exactly what their timeline is specifically 
okay, to understand it. And by the way, it's tell them to send you over a copy, a copy of the new rules so that you know exactly what you're getting into, okay? They may or may not have that yet. You know, that's how... That's how insane this is. It's like it's coming down to the wire here. We're getting down to, you know, not months here, but days before all this is going to come to effect. And, you know, most everybody are very, are, we're very confused on exactly what this new process is going to look like. It's going to take a lot of time to, to work through this and to, to become familiar with, with what it looks like moving forward. And all this for Nan, all this for Nan, it, 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 for no reason. No reason whatsoever. I tell you what the reason was: money grab, money, money grab. They they got a billion dollar settlement off all the brokerages, the NAR, and everybody else. Some lawyers got a billion dollars sitting in escrow that they're working on, and they're trying to get it as big as they can possibly get. And the one thing that nobody's talking about, and Jared James and I talked about this. I'll play the video in just a second. That there's clauses in there. There's clauses in there that say that if they find out that agents are not following the rules, are not following the rules, they can reopen the cases. They can come back after the industry again if we're not following the rules. Now, you got 1.5 million members of NAR right now. You think there's not going to be some agents out there that you can't control, that are doing things not by the book? Probably. Probably. And I think that that clause right there is something that should be stricken from the settlement. If you do a settlement, if you get a billion dollars, if we agree to do this, then there should be zero opportunity for you to ever come back on us uh, ever again. Um, but that, that's kind of how that's kind of the reason why the DOJ was able to reopen uh, the case mm -hmm. against NAR from 2020, because it said they they this is what they said. They said nothing in there said that we couldn't uh, this was going to eliminate any future investigations. It's more than a future investigation. You're reopening the same investigation, but whatever. <laughs> this is the world we're living in. Anyway, I'm going to play this uh, conversation with. Myself and Jared James, you're really going to enjoy this. And hey, if you want to make your first million as a real estate agent, watch the video that I linked at the end of Jared James and I's conversation, and I'll see you on the next video. Be here Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. I'll be making live calls. We'll see you then. So so when you think about clarity, and then you get a huge curveball, like they take the buyer agent field out of MLS or, you know... <laughs> Something like that. How do you handle something like that? When you say, okay, they handle it in what way? Uh, that they take the buy? I mean, like, in what way? I, I honestly don't believe. Uh, first off, mentally, God, talking. mentally, right? A lot of people are obviously, um, some people are, you know, oh, nothing's going to change. Some people are, and yeah. honestly, I don't think we even know completely 100% what the change, I think they're that's still trying the, to figure by it the way, out. That's the answer. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. And so, so, you know, the whole, look, every motivational book known to man, you know, mankind, uh, you know, I can't change how, you know, uh, what happens, but I can change how I react and I can't control others, but I, you know, look, I get it. Like, yes. But again, at some point, these, these things have to be real. Anyone who tells you with complete clarity, we're back to that word, that they know exactly what's going to come. I've got my ideas of what I think is going to happen. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure on, but who knows? I've been wrong before. But the truth is, I just need to be ready. You know, um, I always say right, right now, the difference between a pro and an amateur, when you look at the overall market, most of the market doesn't even know what's happened. Uh, and then the rest of the market, there's a percentage of them that actually knows. And then there's those that have just gotten their talking points and their sister told them they should ask about or their, you know, whatever it is. And so an amateur right now makes it an issue for someone who it's not an issue for. An amateur is somebody. Yeah. who is so feverish about getting you to know how much they know mm -hmm. that they make you say no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk too much. It's like, like, why are you selling me on this? Yeah. You know? And a pro is somebody who once somebody doesn't know about, does know about it, they make it a non-issue because of how much they know. Right. But, but I think sometimes the mistake that people like you and I get into, um, because we're good at these th things, we're good at scripts and dialogues, we're good at words, we're good at these things, is that we rely on our skill set when it's the wrong tool for the job at the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and let me explain to you what I mean. When, 
when these things come up and you're, you're dealing with a buyer, you're dealing with a seller, you're dealing with whatever it is. Look, we've got all our dialogues we go into. I mean, you can go check out my Instagram, check out, I mean, I've got all the dialogue, our students, like I've got the dialogues for all of these things. That's awesome. But we're, we're skipping over probably the most important thing, which is just curiosity. Uh, meaning when someone says something to you, if they bring it up, first off, don't make it an issue for them, you know, because, because we live in this bubble and they don't, you know, I was talking to a lady at an event the other day, she had an accent that I'm not going to try to do. And, uh, and she goes, how do I, how do I get over my accent? I don't want to make video. I don't want to, but you know, people are gonna, and I said exactly that you get over your accent. Nobody else cares. They probably mm -hmm. think it's cool. Mm -hmm. And so when we're dealing with people, first off, let them bring it up if they're going to bring it up. But then once they bring it up, don't just go into a Jared James script, you know, uh, don't go into a Ricky Cruz script, lead with curiosity. Yeah. What did you hear? Right. What, what do you think about that? Yeah. What do you, cause, cause look, it's like this, right? We're, we're unfortunately heading into a political season mm. and everyone's going to get feverishly political and mm. everyone's going to mm. all of a sudden back people and get in this camp. I'm for Biden. I'm for Trump. Neither one of them we'd want our kids to grow up like, so I don't know why we get in these camps so much. But everyone's going to do it. And when they do, you're going to see at family gatherings and everything else, people are going to throw out headlines of what the, well, he's a criminal. Well, he's a this. Well, he's yeah. a, and they're going to start throwing out these headlines. And with all of them, if you just stopped and said, what'd you hear about that? What do you mean? You'll find out that almost nobody knows absolutely anything. They're mm -hmm. just reading a headline. Yeah. And so when you leave with curiosity and, and these things come up with your clients, before you start going into the scripts and dialogues and all this, you go, NAR yeah. did this, and then the DOJ did this, and let me, ah, you know, all that kind of yeah. stuff. That's, that's interesting. Like, my life hasn't changed that much. It's, it's crazy how it's been so overblown. What did you hear? Yeah. And now you, now you not only position yourself to be the expert, but now you know what, you're, what objection you're handling. Mm -hmm. Like, let them talk. They might be like, I don't know, my sister said I had to bring it up. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, my God, the freaking news. Like, yeah, this is what keeps coming up, you know, blah, 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 here's, you know, whatever. Or they might start quoting something they saw in Good Morning America. You know, well, I heard 6%'s gone. Well, 6%'s been gone for a long time for most people. <laughs> and by, by the way, that's the definition of price fixing. We don't price um, fix. Dude, I'm about to do, I'm about to do a reel. They did a, uh, a thing on, um, they asked all these people, in, uh, these consumers, about their experience negotiating commissions with real estate people who have gone through transactions. Mm. And only 17% of them said they negotiated their transaction, uh -huh. their, their commission. So you say 17% of consumers said that they tried to negotiate? They, they negotiated. Now, mm. now, my feeling is 100% of people who have ever got into a real estate transaction negotiated the commission. Mm. Just because you didn't get it down doesn't mean that you didn't negotiate. Mm. It means that that person knew their value and they kept it. Yeah. And then it comes down to, so who do you want to use? The 17% who gave up their commission? You want them to negotiate the largest asset you're ever going to own? Or yeah. you want the one that stood firm and held on their value and now they're fighting for your, you know, whatever. And so anyway, point being, man, when you, when you start to get into uh, these objections and these questions with people and whatever, curiosity, man, like, what'd you hear? Don't be afraid. Yeah. And an objection is a signal people are willing to extend the conversation. Mm. People who aren't willing to close, people who aren't willing to work with you, don't extend conversations. Yeah. Just go no and walk away. I think, I think the conversations with sellers is going to be really easy. Very you know? easy. Oh, extremely easy. Maybe even easier than it used to be, honestly. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, data, and, you know, uh, pictures to paint and everything. I think, I think the, the weird thing that I don't – that, that I, that I'm having, that, I, that I'm that I'm pissed about is that uh, they're kind of try, trying to remove the seller's ability to advertise the buyer agent commission. It's absurd. Um, you know when when it when you know it, it when they when they when they brought it down to zero where you had to where where, where you could do zero if you wanted to. Yeah, that should have been the end of that's it. That's it. it. That's right? it. Consumer choice. Yeah, and then and then then they get to make the decision, but they wanted to take it all these steps further, remove the buyer agent field from MLS, and now you you can men even mention it on MLS. But Dude. but then there's going to be code words like concession. So are they going to take that out as well? And is there so many kind of questions? But it, I'm just like for the on the buyer side, right? I think that's where the struggle is going to be. Um, yeah. You know, with having to 
to deal with yeah, that. Dude, dude, what, what are your thoughts? Dude, they're starting with the end in mind. So when you look at these attorneys, you look at the DOJ, they're starting with the idea that you don't pay out, that you decouple. Mm. So while they're saying competition and they're saying uh, transparency, everything they've come out with has basically come down to, even though the way that this is being done, there's transparency. There's the ability to negotiate. You can go to a discount. Right. You can list on your own. It, it's right. everything they're saying they want is already there. Yeah. But because they're starting with the end in mind and going, no, we don't want the seller contributing at all. Uh -huh. They're using these words that, you know, welcome to 2024. If we just say it enough times, I guess it's true. Mm. And, and, and they're just playing on everybody's stupidity to be able to go, hey, I'd like to dry you off. I'm going to do it with this hose. And enough of the country country goes oh okay that's how you dry me off okay you know mm -hmm. and they just walk in line and they you know whatever but at the end of the day man from a from a uh from a seller perspective um i mean I, I think it i think it got astronomically easier uh buyers where the friction is but from a seller perspective i don't know if you were following the stuff that's happened recently um where there's all these calls now that when you tell people if you don't offer a compensation you potentially eliminate uh, a percentage of the buyer pool because they can't afford to come out of pocket for all mm -hmm. these things. And you could, you potentially put yourself at a competitive disadvantage. Right. And now there's all these people coming out going, well, that's steering. That's mm -hmm. steering. Mm -hmm. I think that we've gotten so far away from our real estate license that we forgot what fiduciary responsibilities are and mm -hmm. what agency is. If yeah. You go read your fiduciary responsibility to the seller, the fiduciary responsibility. It says that you have to let them know of anything that can potentially impact their price or the terms they will get. Right, right. So here's right. my question. If you're telling me it's steering, one of two, number one, then we need a new definition because that's bull crap. Like mm. you, you legally have to tell them that. And number two, if we're going to start uh, 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 telling them that, you know, that uh, they've got a, a fiduciary responsibility uh, to, uh, um, let the other side know you know, whatever are the lawsuits going to come the other way mm -hmm. if they're telling us it's steering and we're not allowed to tell them that mm -hmm. how long before sellers start suing their agents and going you had a fiduciary responsibility to tell me anything mm -hmm. that could impact the price i get or the terms mm -hmm. i get you didn't do that you know whatever yeah. how long before the lawsuits come the other way and now brokers and agents are getting sued by the sellers because they did not follow what they signed on to do which is to follow their fiduciary responsibility yeah how long well, yeah, and, and I was thinking about it. Okay, so they're saying it's price fixing if the seller dictates what the buyer agent is going to get paid, right? That's the argument? Sure. Okay, so so the argument is the, the, the seller dictates how much the buyer agent is going to get paid. Well, they could say that the commission that the seller is paying the listing agent is price fixing because they're, again, they're dictating how much they're going to pay the listing agent. Like, it doesn't, it, but, but Ricky, it goes further. The, the way the contract reads, and you, I know you know this, it is not a contract between them and the buyer's agent. It gives the listing agent the ability to co-op. Yes. yes. That is in the every language, yes. every verbiage, every like. What are we? What are we missing here? Right. Like they're they're, they're, they're paying. Well, that's a whole different uh, conversation, right? So the seller's paying X amount to the listing agent to sell the property, whether there's a buyer agent involved or not. Yeah. So that's it. That's it, man. Whether there's a buyer agent involved or not, and at the end of the day, this is this is anti-competition. I don't care what you hear coming out. This is anti-competition. Like th th this is this is the, the 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 definition of stupidity. Like like you know, saying these things that literally don't add up. The buyer still has every advantage. Like the buyer could still renegotiate. The buyer could uh, uh, have a uh, ask for more. The buyer's agent could ask for more. The, there's that's open market. I, I I I negotiated my buyer commission with buyers back in 2012, 13, 14. The buyer would be like. Will you do it for this? Yes. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Um, Negotiation. Yeah. I mean, I negotiated buyer commissions, you know. Yeah. For, and we're now, we're now turning into an industry where to teach somebody how to protect their commissions is now getting called steering and antitrust and whatever. Mm. In what world is the professional not supposed to be able to have the skill set? So, so on one hand, you're saying, no, you cannot. You cannot uh, uh, release that skill in the negotiation with your client. But then when it comes to the actual largest property they're ever going to own, we need you to now be a master negotiator. Mm. What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> a little bit of cognitive dissonance there. Like, what, what, what? 
Like, am I now? Okay, so I get it. So we're supposed to be schizophrenic. Yeah. So that's what we're doing now. I, I, I loved your post uh, about agents, how they, uh, everybody thinks that they're paper pushers. Um, but they're working all, you know, they're doing all this stuff, right? And, and, and if you think they're paper pushers, go ask their families, Dude. right? And what's even Consultant. crazier is the same people that they serve are the ones uh, coming down on them that they need to get paid less. Um, well, have you seen, um, have you seen like uh, the American Real Estate Association uh, yeah. that was started? Yeah, I really got um, you know, messages from them, yeah. To be a competitor with NAR and stuff like that. What do you think the future is of NAR and these other associations? And uh, um, you know, you know, the, man. The, I mean, if we're being really honest right now, they better get their act right because the value right now, you know, uh, I, I think I think that there's a lot of good that they do uh, behind the scenes. I've got a lot to say about this. Some of which I won't say publicly because I'm involved in some of the behind the scenes and I know some of the stuff. Um, I think that like most organizations in 2024 they're being run, run by a silent uh by a by a, a loud minority and they're making decisions and doing things based on they're not wanting to look bad and they're doing and they're, just, they're always protecting themselves they're, yeah. they're never on the offensive um and i think if they don't, don't get their act right and remember who it is that they're representing uh that they're, they're going to be in a lot of trouble and i do think they do a lot of good behind the scenes when we talk about lobbying and all those kinds of things but you know, uh, not just NAR, but, you know, once you can't have compensation on the MLS and everything, it's like that, that was kind of the whole point of the MLS was co-op, you yeah. know? So you start to say, okay, so what's the value in these things mm -hmm. anymore? There's really and, kind and, of like almost no code of ethics anymore at that point. But dude, I mean, but here's, well, here's the, the funny thing though. I was thinking about this the other day. Like I always like to kind of remove myself from a situation. Like I'm an alien and fly in and look at the current, the current construct. Every decision we're we're making everything we're doing is literally come from is coming from the position of like anti-litigation and you know well, well no you can't do that because that you know because that violates that rule and that violates it we become so rule bound that we're trying to fit within these rules at what point do we finally just kind of rise up and go these rules are stupid mm -hmm. these rules don't make any sense and and really the real problem when we get down to it the real corruption in this whole thing is how litigated of a country we've become. Mm. Because because the reason why, and, and it, why did NAR give in? Because NAR was told that you're either going to go bankrupt, we're going to litigate mm. you into bankruptcy, yeah. or you settle. They had no choice. And well, that's what's going to keep happening over and over. And so the real corruption is that litigation society. Yeah. And that's what the Congress and the Senate should be taken up. But you know why they won't? Because everyone in the Senate, everybody in the Congress, what job did they have before they got there? Mm, they're all yeah. attorneys. Mm -hmm. So you think they're going to go after the real corruption, mm -hmm. which is the fact that we're becoming a litigation society where you don't have to be right anymore. Yeah. All you have to do is have enough money or enough time or enough power to mm -hmm. litigate somebody into submission. Yeah. To the point that yeah. they go, oh, you know what? Settlement is better than bankruptcy. Settlement is better than, you know, well, and that's what's happening right now. Well, speaking of lawyers, though, okay, speaking of lawyers i think i think the, i think what actually happened was you had jurors the jurors by, by the way real quick somebody's saying i wish bankruptcy would have happened guys bankruptcy wouldn't have protected you nar would have gone bankrupt and then the suits would have continued anyway yeah it doesn't protect i just want to make right. sure because i see those comments we should have just gone yeah. bankrupt that's not how it works yeah. i'm sorry man. Yeah. i'll make sure people yeah. understand you have to settle how and, it works. and do a deal to, to prevent the future litigation yeah like the, the bank bankruptcy does not does not stop the same litigation going through again. Like, right. And so then you just, you, you can't file bankruptcy protect. again. So you're going to yeah. have to, you know. Yeah. Sorry, man. I just, bleeding. I see that. I see that streaming and I'm like, no, yeah. no. Well, my point was is that this whole thing, the Sister Burnett, you know, the jury was just consumers that didn't understand how great the system was because they've been mis, it's, it's a misunderstood industry and how it operates and how we get paid and what we do. Right. But, but, but where I'm going is, is, we had it. We had an opportunity. NAR had an opportunity for their lawyers, right, in the litigation to educate the jury yeah. to the point where they understood. Yeah, they and, 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 and not only NAR, but the other defendants just dropped the ball. Um, that's yeah, the they did not yeah. see it. Yeah, there's, there's a, okay, so there's more. So, yes, you're correct. Um, uh, I was asked on 
some level to actually rep NAR in these places, whatever. Uh, and I said, no. And I, and, uh, and they're like, what, why? And I said, because I don't represent you guys. I represent the industry. And, you know, I, I root for you. I want you to do well, but I don't, I don't. You look back and wish you would have, uh, do you regret? No, that, was, that was, was after all the crap was going down when like, uh, uh, you know, like that was going on. There's right. a bigger problem here that nobody's talking about. Um, number one, uh, this settlement is for seven years. So are we going to go back, back and do this all again? The other problem is that, I forget what it's called right now, the clause, but basically uh, they are jonesing right now to retry, to re-come after the whole industry because all their, uh, there's a clause in this settlement that if the industry is not following the rules, mm -hmm. they can retry it and go back for more money and you know the whole mm -hmm. thing. You have 1.5 million members. You're telling me you're not going to be able to find people who aren't following the rules right. of the new settlement? I'm telling yeah. you, they're coming right back around. Mm. You can remember I said that. It's their plan all along. It's an absolute money grab. Mm. And if you don't think this is a money grab and the whole thing was colluding, agents are colluding, agents can't even get along. Now they're colluding. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you don't think it's a money grab, when Redfin paid in, when mm. there was a discount for like, how? how oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought it was all about this price when, fixing. When they yeah. got brought into it, I was like, how are they even colluding on they're the price definition of what you're saying you want up with they're a discount broker how about how about remax pays out 58 million when they're three times the size of berkshire Hathaway, mm. but then home services pays 250 million mm. just because they have a a, a little guy named warren <laughs> who's got yeah. some cash yeah it's a money grab like oh, no is, doubt. again it is it is the great corruption Mm -hmm. but you will not see our government go after them because they all came from that world. You know, it, it's insane. What rules do you think that they're looking for agents to break in order to come back? back, and uh, come dude, back? How about the easy one? You think everybody's getting a signed buyer agency? Mm -hmm. that, that's such an easy one to break, right? You yeah. Know, it's the MLS is rule to enforce it and, you know, whatever. It, it's just corrupt, man. I don't know if you saw the reel I did yesterday, but the DOJ came out yesterday. Yeah. It, you know, so NAR appeal. So, the, so yeah. the DOJ made an made an agreement with NAR, and then they reneged from it this year. And they're mm -hmm. like, "No, nah, we're going to open it back up because public sentiment has changed." Yeah. And NAR, um, uh, this appealed is where NAR it. was right. NAR went and appealed it and went, "Whoa, mm -hmm. whoa! We make a deal with the government. We expect you to keep that deal." Mm -hmm. And so it goes back into the appeal process. And who rules on whether the DOJ has the right to open it back up? The DOJ. DOJ. <laughs> <laughs> like, is this America? Like, what? I mean, this is this is Gestapo yeah. stuff. It's yeah, could this be like unreal. a possible conflict of interest? Like, I mean, refer that over to another. And, and literally, <laughs> what the DOJ points to in their um, in their defense of turning it down, a three judge panel already voted two to one. Yeah, mm. duh, McFly. That's why we're appealing. Right. You don't just point to the decision and go, oh, it already happened. Yeah. That's not <laughs> what an appeal is. <laughs> like, I'm just like, this uh, is unreal. This is unreal. Did, it, did you watch uh did you watch Back to the Future lately? Dude, you know what's funny you say that? It's so funny you say that because uh, we have our advance coming up, right? In September. And I think our theme is gonna be back to the future. Okay, because, because, you need to. because like everybody right now is so focused on everything changing, mm. and I don't think they're fo focused enough on what hasn't changed. Mm. And so it's mm. like all, all the things I've talked about the last mm. three to five years, mm. I really just want to talk about them again. It's like back. It's like, hey guys, remember? Hey, let's get let's yeah. just play a clip from two years ago. Yeah. Hey, let's just put up the slides from four years ago. You know, like it's it. That's what matters right now. What you what know? I found is the more that things change the more you must depend on the things that never change. It, it, it's another way, that's another way of saying it. It's so true, man. Like we, we, need, we need to have the ability. Look, I always say marry the principle, date the model, okay? And so there are principles that don't change, you know? So like we say things like, you gotta make 25 calls a day, 25 calls a day. That's great, but it's not calls, it's contacts. Some people don't wanna be called, some do. Some want to be texted. Some want to be emailed. Some want to be, you have to, you know, the principle is contact. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the call is the strategy, right? Right, right. And so tra transportation is the principle, but, you know, horse and buggy, car, bike, train are the model strategy. 
the principles when we say don't they don't change yeah you know the principles of relationship the principles they don't change yeah but what we have to be cognizant of those are the things that don't change we've got to be cognizant of the strategy change like where do we go hey yeah. we don't give out fax numbers anymore mm -hmm. but we're still sending contracts back and forth yeah you know? and so we have to be up on that stuff and so we need to know what's changing but man we need to know what's not changed right what do you what do you think about agents who, because I'll post a lot of stuff about struggling agents and, you know, this, that, that the other, and I'll, there'll be a lot of comments from agents saying how glad they are that these, the, the bottom of the barrel agents are leaving the business. And I'm like, guys, number one, they're not selling any properties. Why do you care if they leave? Why not pump them up and help them? Maybe 1% go on to be great agents. <laughs> um, Sure. Well, yeah, like, like I'm a big component of like, I'm not trying to like say, oh, if you're not selling anything, you just need to leave or all the inexperienced agents need to, I was an inexperienced agent at one time. Um, you know, I, I was a bottom of the barrel agent. Um, what do you, what, what's your stance on, you know, that some of these agents need to leave, don't need to leave. What do people need to hear about that? Hey, you know what? A lot of agents do need to leave, but that's not our business. You know, like that's a, uh, um, I, a story I don't tell often is that uh, my first six months, I was one of those agents mm -hmm. and I was working another job and literally my broker came to me to fire me. And uh, she's like, I think you'd be awesome. I, I think you're incredible. She's like, but I just can't, I can't, can't hang on to you. And it, it just mm -hmm. happened to be coincidentally at the same time I had made the decision to go full time and bet on myself. Mm -hmm. And uh so I'm very I'm very careful about that because if we if we threw that out I'd be thrown out you know right and at the end of the day if you're willing to pay a fee and have your license then fantastic because a certain amount of those kernels are gonna pop and they become the best of the industry hello like that mm -hmm. that's that's mm -hmm. what happens uh, and the ones that don't belong won't stick around and that's not really our business yeah. it happens yeah. on its own right you know they don't they don't need us putting them down and telling them you know whatever it's gonna happen regardless you know. But, uh, but there's a lot of diamonds in there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of crap too, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, but I just, don't, I just don't think it's a focus of ours. I don't, it's kind of like gossip. If I don't yeah. have an ability to help the situation, I don't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the same way, uh, when we talk about, you know, agents at the quote unquote bottom at that time, uh, I don't, don't know what, what good it serves for me to constantly just put them down and say, get out, get, yeah. get on, get. Yeah. Yeah, you know the cream's gonna rise to the top, and you don't know who from there is gonna be teaching you one day. Yeah. Again, hello. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, I, don't think, I don't teacher. think it's worth any focus. I don't think it, I don't even think it's worth any focus. Yeah, yeah. They're like, get out. Leave, you know, more business for us. Blah blah blah. I'm like, they're not, not taking business. They're doing business to begin with. <laughs> if anything, they're making you look good. If you go to the same <laughs> listing appointment, like, look, that's one less pro they're talking to. Like, yeah, yeah I'd love to go up against. Yeah, them. you know, like that. That's I got. Yeah, man. Yeah, I got no problem. Yeah. You know, that's just not, just not, man. There's limited things to focus on. You know, the the older I get, the more, the more things I have going on. You know, the more you start to realize how dumb some of the things are that you used to focus on. Yeah.